Hi guys. You know, what started out as an absolutely gorgeous morning, here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas, has just turned into just another gloomy, gray, yuck, depressing day here in the end times, here on this Sunday, good lord, now afternoon. That would be December 16th, 2018. So I just posted my interview with uh, the diva of doom herself, Gail Zawacki, over there on Collapse Chronicles. If you want to go over there and find that interview, although I'm going to republish it here on Tuesday. And in that interview, we were referring a lot to Gail's classic compendium of doom, her primer of doom called Doom for Dummies, which she wrote in, uh, or wrote or compiled might be the better word, back in 2014, but it is certainly relevant today for anyone just starting down this rabbit hole, or even for seasoned doomers. Uh, Doom for Dummies is, in my opinion, probably the single greatest source in one place for anybody trying to figure out what is going on on this planet, and more importantly, you know, the, the terms, the jingo, uh, other doomers that you are not familiar with that she recommends. So what I am going to do for, oh, probably the next 30 minutes, you are certainly welcome uh, to do this yourself. Uh, I am going to put the link to Doom for Dummies uh, from Gail's excellent blog called Wit's End. Um, just one of the many features on this excellent blog called Wit's End. And I'm just going to dive in. And this, if, if you went from beginning to end, I don't know, two or three hours it would take to go through this. And you could spend the rest of your life following all of the links and suggestions Gail has. So we're just going to dive into the middle and, and I could pretty much throw a dart and to uh, whet your appetite for doom for dummies and then you should finish reading this yourself and go over to Collapse Chronicles for that interview or wait around till Tuesday and you will hear it here. But. Without further ado, let's just dive right in to Doom for Dummies by Gail Zawacki, the diva of Doom herself. And one of the things she does is she, as I have done several times in on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, this is her version of the nomenclature and acronyms in the Doomer lexicography you will need to know if you don't want to drown in the alien perplexing terminology. Number one, the Anthropocene. A new geological epoch following the Holocene in which human activity now influences global systems. And another more alarming related concept, the Anthropozoic, a major new era, era in which human activity dominates natural processes. Some say the Anthropocene began with the Industrial Revolution, the smart money puts it back to the extinction of the megafauna, or maybe the discovery of fire. Number two, Tio Twalki, the end of the world as we know it. A bit passe, 
goes all the way back to Y2K, but it's still a good shorthand reference to what is going to happen when Ayn Rand acolytes have their heads explode. Number three, NTE and <coughs> the associated NTHE. NTE, near-term extinction for extra pizzazz, near-term human extinction. Cli-fi, a genre of fiction based on climate change. I've talked about uh, that in other rants. Number four, energy slaves. The amount of work performed for us by fossil fuels converted to the human equivalent of effort, which now stands at 22 billion by one estimate. Okay, next, VHEMT is the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement. May we live long and die out. So far, no members have volunteered to go first. Of course, don't forget BAU, otherwise known as business as usual, generally used in the context of we are screwed if we continue business as usual. What is hospice in Duber terms? Hospice is where you are now. You just don't know it. Doomstead. The well-stocked hideaway where silly people think they can escape the zombie hordes. The uh, title of my interview, the quote that I pulled out uh, of my hour-long interview with Gail was, you're not going to be able to survive this no matter how hard you prepare. There is no way out. You are fucked. And you don't want to be here when it all comes down. All right. What are positive amplifying feedback, feedbacks? Effects that dwarf the initial forcing of CO2, making climate change nonlinear and rapid, such as the albedo effect, which, in, which is reflective ice melts which leads to dark water that absorbs more radiation that causes more warming, which results in more ice melting, etc., etc. <clears throat> what is Gale's definition of peak oil? No, not when oil runs out, but rather the point where EROEI becomes unprofitable. Soon, in other words, but not soon enough to save us from catastrophic climate change. And then, of course, that begs the question, what is EROEI? Is the energy return on energy invested. You will hear this a lot in the peak oil blogs. This is how much energy it costs to extract the energy compared to how much energy is obtained. What is a Doomer hippo? Hippo, habitat loss, population, pollution, overshoot, adds up to a whole lot of trouble. I don't think she has iPad in here. iPad, uh, as Paul Ehrlich's version of hippo kind of, is that impacts, environmental impacts, equal population times affluence 
times technology. All right. Uh, we have Hubbard's curve in Seneca Cliff. Hubbard's curve graphs the inevitable decline of resources originally for oil wells, but it's been kind of adapted to other resource collapses. And then you have the Seneca Cliff is showing that things go downhill much faster than they went up. Zoop. You know, the, the main one being uh, the collapse of human populations. Okay, you will probably not be down here long before you hear of the tragedy of the commons. This is a scenario formulated by economist Garrett Hardin in which individual short-term interest, can you say Atlas Shrugged and Ayn Rand, depletes common resources. Call it a law. And this is uh, quoting Garrett Hardin, you know, summing up the tragedy of the commons, <clears throat> quote, each man is locked into a system that compels him to increase his herd without limit in a world that is limited. Ruin is the destination toward which all men rush, each pursuing his own best interest in a society that believes in the freedom of the commons. Freedom in a commons brings ruin to all. That is exactly what it does, and this is the point that uh, Atlas Shrugged aficionados will never understand. Okay, going a bit out here, Fermi, or is it Fermi's Paradox? Question, where are the aliens? Answer, just when they approached the technological ability to communicate or travel in space, they went extinct, just as we are about to. And then she quotes you to the article, Why Habitable Exoplanets Are Bad News for Humanity's Future. All right, you hear this term dystopia as opposed to utopia. Dystopia is an imaginary place or time that is horrible often following collapse when the state has become fascist or totalitarian and the environment is ruined. Or maybe a real place and real time. Alright, what is apocalyptic anxiety? You will not be down here in this rabbit hole very long before you suffer from apocalyptic anxiety, also known as pre-traumatic -trauma stress syndrome. This is the definition from Robert Stolero, PhD. <clears throat> Apocalyptic anxiety is the destruction of human civilization would also terminate the historical process, the sense of human history stretching along from the distant past to an open future through which we make sense out of our individual existences. I want to call the horror that announces such a possibility <clears throat> apocalyptic anxiety. Apocalyptic anxiety 
anticipates the collapse of all meaningfulness. There you go. Now I have to admit, here is one that I did not know. So even the old uh, what am I? Doomsday prophets can learn something. Uh, Dunbar's number. Dunbar's number with more than 150 members of a tribe, people lose the ability to empathize, so they start killing each other. Why not? For an entertaining explanation, read the Cracked.com article, What is the Monkey Sphere? And I don't know, so more than 150 members of a tribe. Well, hell, we got over 6,000 right here in Humpty Dumpty tribe. But you can certainly see this in action. Doomers starting to kill each other uh, here on the comments pages. Where, of course, uh, Gail in our interview uh, was showing, was, I think she was a little bit proud of being... Uh, of being banned by Michael Mann, uh, that, that you really know uh, that you're making an impression in the Doomosphere when other Doomers, such as ass-licking toadies, start despising you and destroying, uh, you, you know, your body of work and, and, and all of this shit. When you become a target of other Doomer tribes members, as I have, as I say, I think I have now managed to end up on Paul Beckwith's shit list is the latest shit list that I have ended up on apparently that uh, you know you have arrived in the Doomosphere when all of us tribes members start killing each other. Okay, this Jevon's Paradox, which I've had entire rants on, a simple dev definition, Jevon's paradox, also known as the rebound effect, is the observation that increasing energy efficiency ultimately leads not to conservation, but to more use. And LED lights are a classic example of Jevon's paradox that, you know, trying to suggest that LED lights were some sort of a solution to the problem of the environmental problem of incandescent lights. They were so successful that LED lights are now a bigger threat to the planet than the incandescent lights were that they were trying to uh, address. Okay, of course, this was a major theme of our conversation that I, that I had with Gail. Apocaloptimist. What is an apocaloptimist? A person or an, or an organization talking mainly about these little limp dick mainstream greeny environmental organizations is what she's referring to. Uh, a person or organization that makes a powerful case that Armageddon is nigh, but then posits unsubstantiated hope that human ingenuity will solve the problem in time. There you go. Then she has a special note. Despite being categorized as doomers, virtually every single person in the encyclopedia is an overt or covert apocaloptimist with one or two exceptions who are either selling snake oil or they actually believe their own bullshit. But primarily for the simple reasons that true doomers, such as Gail Zawacki, are 
rarely read, and never published. So the distinctions are broad and suspect. <clears throat> there are also other self-explanatory such distinctions as apocaloportunist and apocaloptimistic. Uh, Gail is not a fan of the Bliss Ninny. And that, of course, le leads into hopium. Hopium is arguably coined by Lone Wolf back in 2000, designating that deranged condition in which a person is deluded into thinking that humanity will survive omnicide. Yes, cousin to that would be greenwashing. This is part of the reason for hopium, for the clueless fucking moron, little limp dick, greeny, mainstream environmentalist. Greenwashing, when corporations collaborate with green activist groups to market their products as sustainable. Some greenwashing is wishful thinking, but usually it is contemptibly unscrupulous. I just bought another bottle of that Dawn dishwashing liquid yesterday that has the little baby duck on the uh, cover of their dishwashing liquid talking about how Dawn dishwashing liquid is saving the planet. I have already had a rant on that in the past where I actually called Dawn Dishwashing Liquid to ask them how their planet-killing product was saving the planet. You can find that somewhere. Uh, okay, <clears throat> the Faustian bargain. The Faustian bargain. For this, she turns it over uh, to the agonist. And all of these, she has, she has probably hundreds of links in here to all of these other sources. This is just one. She lets the agonist uh, describe and define Faustian bargain for doomers. <clears throat> Quote, Humanity is doubling down on its Faustian climate bargain by pumping up fossil fuel particulate and nitrogen pollution. Humans have been pumping both greenhouse gases, mainly CO2 and aerosols, fine particles, into the atmosphere for more than a century. The CO2 accumulates steadily, staying in the climate system for millennia with a continuously increasing warming effect. Aerosols, meanwhile, have a cooling effect by reducing solar heating of the ground that depends on the rate that we pump aerosols into the air because they fall out of the air after about five days. Reduction of the net human-made climate forcing by aerosols has been described as a Faustian bargain because the aerosols constitute deleterious particulate air pollution. Reduction of the net climate forcing by half will continue only if we allow air pollution to build up to greater and greater amounts. <clears throat> More likely, humanity will demand and achieve a reduction of particle air pollution whereupon because the CO2 from fossil fuel burning remains in the surface climate system for millennia, the devil's payment will be extracted from, huma from humanity via increased global warming. Uh, this is all a description of uh, <clears throat> global dimming. And the way that I describe <coughs> 
Faustian bargains. Uh, my own lingo is, is, is frying pan or the fire. From here on out, more and more of our choices we're making on this planet, do we want to die in the frying pan or do we want to die in the fire? We are fucked if we do. We are fucked if we don't. It makes no difference. We are fucked. We do, we don't, we jump in the frying pan, we jump in the fire. It doesn't matter which side of the Faustian bargain uh, we choose from here on out. We're fucked. This is what I think Gail is talking about. Speaking of fucked, how about the trifecta instead of the trifecta? We have the trifecta, as in the race to see which of the three predominant converging catastrophes will be the first trigger to total collapse and doom. This is kind of like frying pan, fire, and volcano, I guess. Okay. Number one is energy peak oil, coal, and gas. Number two would be the environment, pollution, overpopulation, and climate. And number three, economy, overextraction, income equality, and poverty, financial Ponzi schemes, and corruption. As stated by the curator, meaning Gail, aren't we lucky to have ringside seats at the finish line. And again, uh, I have discussed the trifecta in my own rants, although I haven't actually used this word. It, it's not a matter of which one. It is the race to see at what point the, the combination of the three environment, energy, and economy, at which point just the, uh, the, the, the combination of all three will lead to collapse. Okay, you will definitely hear about methane. The, the uh, deeper and longer you stay in the doomosphere, methane Get used to it. A much more potent greenhouse gas than CO2, and there is lots of it locked up, or at least it has been locked up, in the permafrost and under the oceans in clathrates. See the giant methane monster lurking with the ludicrous suggestion at the end that the time for a carbon tax is now. Ha <laughs> ha! Will we look on this hole in Siberia as the beginning of the end? And she wraps up the, uh, her Doomer dictionary with the term woo-woo. I use the term bliss ninny, woo woo or bliss ninny, to uh, bring us to the close of the uh, Doom for Dummies dictionary and the close to this uh, week's sermon. Woo woo. Any type of spiritualism or spirituality, I think she might have meant to say there, that enables the devout to think that there is an alternative to total, incipient annihilation. This is closely related to hopium. Woo-fuckery. Woo-fuckery is when an apocaloptimist makes a convincing case for doom 
and then slips some woo-woo hopium in at the end to make you feel better. But uh, if you really want to feel better, I highly advise, I will put the link uh, to Doom for Dummies in here. That, that was just one section. And uh, good Lord, uh, Gail's a wacky. Uh, I, I don't know why this Doom for Dummies uh, it, it, it is not more famous than it is. It is indispensable. Uh, source material for anybody uh, going down this rabbit hole. Uh, if, if you are not feeling fucked enough more quickly than you previously thought you could feel fucked, Go over there to Doom for Dummies, but I do go over there to Collapse Chronicles and listen to my interview with Gail. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up today's Doomsday Sermon. And me and the little dog are going to figure out uh, what to do on this gloomy afternoon. I think uh, my boss from the Optimus Club Christmas Tree Lot, she has invited Sancho and I to a holiday cookie decorating party at her house. So uh, I think now that I'm done with Doom for Dummies, I'm going to head to a Christmas holiday cookie decorating party with my fellow optimist. Smoke them if you got them. We all know why. Bye, guys.